Yo, what's up guys? So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my NVIDIA Shadow Play recording settings. I've had quite a few people ask me about this, so I guess it's finally time for me to make a video on it. I do apologize for my voice right now as I'm a little sick and sick for about a week now, but hopefully it's not too bad for you guys. Now, before I start this video and share the best recording settings with you guys, if you do enjoy this video, if it does help you, if you like these settings, please do consider leaving a like and a comment as it helps this video out so much with the algorithm. Maybe consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you don't miss any useful videos like this in the future. If you guys have any questions or you want to get in contact with me i have links to all my social medias down in the description below and if you guys want to see me play some games live my twitch link is down in the description as well but that is enough of that now we can get right into the video so first off i just want to share with you guys why i use shadow play over something like obs and it's just the ease of use shadow play makes it so easy it's set it and forget it i don't have to open up any other apps anytime i want to record something i literally just press a button whenever i want to save a recording or save a clip the quality is really good the only problem is that it's kind of limited to 60 fps you know in obs you can do 120 fps recordings but it really doesn't make that big of a difference 60 FPS is still the standard. Shadow Play is just so easy to use, and that's why I choose it over any other recording software. But as with any recording software, there is still going to be somewhat of an impact to your FPS. With Shadow Play, it's going to be very, very minimal, but it is still going to be there. I just want you guys to know that. It's going to be less than if you're recording with something like OBS. But as with any recording software or any overlay, it's going to affect your FPS. But in this case, it's going to be so slight, so minimal that most people aren't even going to notice it. But now that you guys kind of have a general idea of Shadow Play, I'm going to show you guys how to set it up and configure figure it properly. So the first thing that we need to do is go into our GeForce experience. If you guys don't have this, I'll leave a link down in the description below to this. You're going to click download now, install that, and then it's going to make you sign in, I believe. You might be able to use it as a guest, I'm not sure. But once you do that and get all that stuff set up, it's going to take you to this application right here. You should be on a page that looks something like this. And once you're in here, hit this setting icon on the top right hand side. And I like to turn all this stuff off just so I'm not getting pop ups in my screen when I'm playing. I have image scaling off as well. The thing that we're going to be messing with is the in game overlay right here. So if this is disabled, hit this right here and enable it and then we're going to go into our settings and this is where all the recording settings are for shadow play so for connect it doesn't really matter i just leave all of these disconnected because i don't use any of them i'd recommend just staying disconnected from these anyways because you shouldn't be using shadow play to stream obs is always going to be king for that shadow play in my opinion is much more suited towards gameplay record but more specifically clip recording which i'll show you guys how to set that up in just a minute hud layout i have all these off as i don't want anything else extra on the screen i like to see just my game and my game only however if you guys worry a lot you know you want to make sure that it's really recording on your status indicator you can set this to either recording your screen and when you are recording or you do have your instant replays on you'll have a little indicator which shows that but i set mine to off because i always just check before i start my game that shadow play is on and recording keyboard shortcuts this is all going to be personal preference a lot of them don't really matter however there are going to be a few ones that you need to do so make sure that you have a good one for your open and close in game overlay and then for your recording ones you want to have one for your toggle instant replay on and off you need one for the save the last two minutes recorded yours might say something different which i'll explain that here in a little bit but make Make sure you have a keybind for this and then toggle manual recording on slash off and save make sure you have a comfortable keybind for that this one right here is what we're going to use to save clips and this one right here is what we're going to do to actually record the full gameplays none of these other ones really matter you know you're not going to be streaming unless you're using custom overlays which most people aren't using those for recordings and these ones right here don't matter unless you're measuring your performance like your fps just this one right here open close in game overlay and then all three of your record keybinds now for recordings this one is going to be mostly personal preference you know wherever you have some free space on a drive mine is on my e-drive i have a completely separate hard drive for my recordings i would really recommend that you guys don't record on the same drive that you're playing your game on unless you have an extremely fast ssd if you're doing this on a hard drive you could potentially notice a performance hit it could feel really choppy really delayed so that is just something to keep in mind if you can avoid putting them on separate drives i would strongly recommend doing so but i know not everybody has that option so if you aren't able to just be aware that there could potentially be a performance hit and it could make your game run a little bit funny now broadcast live i just turn all this off turn it to the lowest because you're not going to be streaming from shadow play there's no reason you need to be streaming there when obs exists so just don't worry about any of those settings highlights i like to turn this off just because when you have this on it clips a lot of random stuff that you don't really need to be clipped in just a second i'll be showing you guys a better alternative to this but i do leave this off just because it's going to fill up your drive with so many useless clips and kills that probably weren't even impressive at all that you wouldn't be clipping yourself that just make sure that this is set to off photo mode slash game filter i have this set to off i'd recommend keeping this to off at all times unless for very specific instances where you're using filters for a competitive advantage in game like in warzone or apex i'm not using that anymore because any extra filters are going to affect your fps now for audio a lot of this is going to depend on your mic how loud your mic is for system sounds i have my volume set to 20 percent that gives me a pretty good volume for my game clips and for microphone you just want to set that to whatever your microphone is i have a wavelength so i set that to the wavelength you know if you have a blue yeti it's going to say blue yeti if you have a blue snowball it'll say blue snowball etc so just choose whatever mic that you're using i have my mic volume set at 100 
100%. That's a good volume for me. It doesn't really drown out the game sound. It's a really good balance. You might have to watch your clips back a few times to see which volume kind of works for you, but this is what works for me. And also, if you guys want, you can either create a single track or separate both tracks. I have mine on a single track just because, you know, like I said, I have a good balance. However, if you have it on separate both tracks, it'll separate your mic audio and your game audio so that when you're editing, you can individually adjust the volume of each one. But I keep it pretty simple. I just keep it on a single track. So now we're going to do the most important one that you guys have probably been waiting for is the video capture settings. For instant replay length, this is going to vary a lot on what kind of game you play. If you play a fast paced game like Apex where fights don't really last that long, you could probably change the length down to one minute, which is what I used to have it on when I played a ton of Apex. But if you're playing a more like tactical shooter like Valorant or Counter-Strike, you want to bump that up because the rounds last a lot longer and you want to be recording the full rounds sometimes. Something can happen at any time, the beginning of the round, end of the round. So you want to get that full recording. So for games like that, I'd recommend like two minutes plus, you know, faster paced games. I'd recommend maybe one minute, a minute 30. Just know that the higher that you go with this, the more that your FPS in game is going to be affected. It is going to be very, very, very minimal, but it's just something to keep in mind for people who are chasing the highest FPS. I tested this myself and although the difference is extremely minimal, it is still there. But for me right now, I'm playing a lot of Valorant. So I just keep mine set on two minutes. Quality, you want to set this to custom. For resolution, you want to leave it to your in-game resolution. You know, if I was to change this to 4K or 1440, my GPU would have to do extra work to render that out in the higher resolution, which in turn would affect my FPS. So keeping this set to in-game is going to be the best option. For frame rate, you always want to keep this on 60 FPS as 30 FPS. Recordings are extremely choppy. They don't look very good at all. I wish you could set custom frame rate values for shadow play. That's kind of one of the downfalls of it right now. But 60 FPS is still perfectly fine. It's still the industry standard for clips. Now for bitrate, I keep mine on 30. I feel like it's a pretty good mix of visual clarity. While not getting too high, the files aren't going to be too big. The performance of my game isn't going to be hit too much. The lowest I'd recommend you guys go is 20. It, that's only if you have a really bad computer or if you have a small drive and you can't be taking up a lot of space. I really do feel like 30 to 50 is about the sweet spot. Once you start going above 50, it's kind of diminishing returns, especially with 1080p. But if you guys are recording at higher resolutions, you know, you play in 1440p, you play in 4k, then bumping those up could definitely be beneficial to you. But I only play on 1080, so 30 is perfectly fine for me. That's what I've been using in my videos for the past two, three years. But if you guys want to, you want to get that little extra bit of visual clarity, then going up towards 50, it would be perfectly fine. But just know that the higher that you go, there is going to be another performance hit. Like I said, I've already tested it. It is extremely, extremely minimal, but the difference is there. Nothing you can feel, but it is there. So that's going to be it for our video capture settings. Now for notifications, you just want to have all of these turned off because every time a shadow play notification pops up when you're in game, I've noticed that my game gets a little bit sluttery. My FPS drops a little bit. So I just like to have all of these off. I know a lot of people have had problems with their shadow play just turning off on its own. I've had this problem happen to me a couple of times, but that can be easily avoided by just simply just checking it before you open up your game and while you're in your game. And once you have all your notifications set up, we're going to go back. And this one right here is extremely important. You guys need to do this. In your privacy control tab, make sure that desktop capture is turned off. If you're just recording gameplay clips, there's no reason to have this on. It's going to use extra resources and going to be recording your background at all times. And it's going to affect your FPS so much. I know a lot of people who say they don't like shadow play because it's really choppy, stuttery. You know, sometimes it records the desktop. It feels bad. This is the main reason right here. And turning this off will fix 99% of those problems. So unless you're recording something where you specifically need to look at the desktop, this needs to be turned off. I can't stress how important this one setting is right here. I've changed so many people's minds on shadow play with just this little setting right here. So yeah, desktop capture, need to have that turned off. So important. And then for performance monitoring, you know, we're just going to set this off. Unless you're specifically like measuring your FPS, doing tests, then you can turn that on. But I have mine set to off. I don't do any of that stuff. But now after we have all of our settings done, we're going to hit done right here. And then if you guys are looking to record, this is going to be a recording right here. And if you guys are using this for clips, like how I do personally, you want to set your instant replay to on. And this is what's going to save, you know, the last two minutes of my recording, or if you guys have one minute set, three minutes, whatever, this is the thing that we're going to use. And this is the thing that you want to always check is on. So every time when you boot up a game, you know, my key line is alt end. So I press alt end. I come into my video overlay. I make sure this is on. I see that it's on and then I'm good. Anytime, you know, I get like a cool kill in game or I get a nice clutch, I'll just press alt I on my keyboard and it automatically saves the last two minutes of my gameplay. It's super easy. I even have a button on my stream deck where I can just press that and it presses alt I for me and it saves the last two minutes of my gameplay. Make sure that's on at all times. And then for your recording, it's really simple. You could, I could alt P that would start my recording or you could come in here and hit start. Now I'm not in game, so it's going to ask me to turn desktop capture on, but if you're in game, it's not going to ask you to do that. And then it's going to tell you that it's recording and then you're done with that. When you want to end recording, you can either come back in here and hit stop or you can hit your shortcut 
Mine's Alt-P, so I just hit Alt-P and it's done recording. You can record and use Instant Replay at the same time. I've done that so much. But generally, I just use the Instant Replay feature because that's good enough for me in most of my clips. But anyways, guys, that is going to do it for today's video. I really hope that these settings can help you. Personally, I feel like these settings are the best mix of visual clarity while also not losing too much performance in game. Where most YouTube tutorials are really only focused on the quality and don't really care about how your game runs. So I'm trying to be that middle ground because I know no one likes having low FPS in game. Like I said, if you enjoyed this video, please do consider leaving a like and a comment as it helps out so much. You want to see future videos, you know, subscribe, hit that notification button. If you want to get in touch with me, you have any questions at all, links to my social medias are down in the description below. You could even join the Discord. That's a really good place to reach me. And if you guys do want to see me play some games live, which channel is down there as well, I stream just about every other day. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace.